Hey everyone, so this next topic is about hydrostatic pressure. I know we talked about oncotic pressure previously, uh, now let's take a look at what, what this is. Now, what hydrostatic pressure actually means uh, is actually uh, the pressure that's inside or outside the blood vessel. Now, it's the pressure inside here, okay, the blood vessel. What determines hydrostatic pressure? Uh, the amount of blood or volume inside uh, the blood vessel, okay? Now, the higher, uh, the, the more blood you have, the more uh, volume you have, the higher the hydrostatic pressure, okay? Now, there's hydrostatic pressure inside the blood vessel. Now, what does this pressure do? It pushes fluid out. Because this pressure is so high, what happens is is that the capillary membranes here, uh, they can't hold that pressure in. So what they do, what ends up happening is that the, the small amounts of uh, plasma leak through. Okay, When the hydrostatic pressure inside this blood vessel becomes really high. Okay, There's also hydrostatic pressure uh, outside uh, the uh, blood vessel. Now, this is actually a very, very low um, pressure, and it's actually negligible when it comes to calculations and real-life things. But what does this pressure do that's in the interstitial space? This hydrostatic pressure here, it pushes fluid in. Does that make sense? Hydrostatic pressure inside the blood vessel pushes fluid out, whereas the pressure, um, the hydrostatic pressure inside the interstitial space and around the cells pushes fluid in, okay? <clears throat> so again, you have one force out, one force in, all right? <clears throat> now, we had talked about the capillary membrane also and how when you have really high hydrostatic pressures, we get leakage of fluid, right? Let's look at now uh, in combination with oncotic pressure. Okay, because a lot of questions have that formula and that question where you have to calculate uh, if there's net filtration or net absorption. Okay, so um, there's an oncotic pressure in the blood or the capillary. Okay, same thing, capillary blood. Okay, there's an oncotic pressure in the interstitium. Right. There's a hydrostatic pressure uh, in the blood or in the capillary, and there's a hydrostatic pressure in the um, interstitium, okay? Now, the really easy way to do this calculation is to just give it a positive or a negative value, okay? What do I mean by that? If it's positive, that means that it's going to be pushing the fluid out. If it's negative, it means it's going to be pushing the fluid in. Okay, makes sense. So the way, I, the easy way I remember that is um, negative and in. You know, so the I and the negative. You know, it makes sense here. Um, <clears throat> so let's look at first now the oncotic pressure of the blood. What does this do? Does this bring fluid in or does it push fluid out? It brings fluid in. So what do we give it? We give it a negative value. How about the oncotic pressure in the interstitium here? What do we give this value? What is it doing? It's bringing fluid out, right? So what do we give it? A positive. How about the hydrostatic pressure of the blood? This is a big positive, right? Because it's pushing fluid out. <clears throat> now, how about the hydrostatic pressure in the interstitium? This is a negative. It's in, okay? Now, let's do a really, you know, basic sample question here um, and just giving it some values. Let's say they give you a question. They give you a long paragraph first about, you know, a 44-year-old male who has heart failure, et cetera, et cetera. They give you, you know, all this information. At the end, all they do is they just give you these numbers. They say, well, the oncotic pressure uh, in the capillary, which is uh, the blood, is 5. Okay, they say the oncotic pressure in an interstitium is 2. The hydrostatic pressure of the blood or the capillary is 10, and the hydrostatic pressure of the interstitium is 4. Now, instead of using that really complicated, um, you know, the net filtration formula, which, you know, has that whole, you know, the PC minus PI, and then you do the parentheses, 
don't do that, okay? Just take these four numbers that they gave you. I have my positives, the 10 and the 2, which is equal to 12, right? And I have my negatives, the 5 and the 4, which is equal to 9. So 12 minus 9, okay? Easy as that, okay? So that gives me a pressure of 3. Now, the point of this is, is this 3 positive or negative? It's positive, right? Because the positives outweigh the negatives. You see that the positive was the 10 and the 2, which outweighs the negatives here. So if it's positive, again, let's go back now. If it's positive, we have net filtration. That means that we have a pressure that's actually pushing fluid out. It's pushing fluid out. There's net filtration, not net um, uh, uh, reabsorption. Okay, so this is not reabsorption, it's filtration because of the positive number that we got at the end. And a lot of questions they give you where they just have, you know, these numbers, these four numbers, and they ask you to calculate it. Okay. Now, the next thing here that we have talked about is that uh, there's also uh, another factor in the formula called um, Kf. Now, what this is, is basically the uh, filtration constant, right? Okay, um, and this constant number, um, I haven't seen a lot of questions where they actually give you this and ask you to calculate something, but you have to know what it means, okay? It basically means the permeability of the capillary, okay? So let's take a look at a capillary here, and we see that this capillary, and if we actually, you know, uh, microscopically look at it, we can actually see, you know, the membranes here, okay? There are thin membranes, we have your basement membranes, we have the fenestrated, uh, you know, um, epithelium. It's basically all those things that make up the membrane, right? Um, now, what determines the permeability of a capillary? Well, how loose are, is, are the fenestrations? How loose is the basement membrane? So give me some type of you know disease state or something that would increase my permeability. Well, I would have to have something that would damage the fenestrations, damage the basement membrane. Right? What's something that can damage the basement membrane? Burns. Okay? Burns, heat. What will it'll do is basically damage your basement membranes. It'll damage all of the, you know, the epithelium here. Um, and what will happen then? My permeability will increase, right? Because the holes that are here will just increase. All, all that's really happening is this. Um, we just have holes being made everywhere, okay? I mean, not literally, but you can think of it like this, okay? So if I have holes here now, because of the burns, What's going to happen to um, the blood that's coming through here? It's going to leak. Okay? It's going to leak fluid. Now, what happens when it leaks fluid? It goes into the interstitium. You ever notice when you get a burn on your hand, it forms that little bubble? Well, this is why. What's in that bubble? Fluid, plasma, right? because you've damaged your membranes and all that fluid is just leaking out now into the interstitium and just staying here, right? Because the capillary membranes are damaged, okay? And uh, again, it, so if they ever ask you, you know, what, what determines filtration constant, what determines KF permeability, and which, and one thing, one major, major thing that does it, or, you know, that damages it and increases permeability are burns, okay?